replace our entire manufacturing base with a new, precise, less expensive and more flexible way of making products. Yet the future of nano manufacturing depends first and foremost on creating the tools, instruments, metrological devices and modeling applications that can effectively build complex structures with atomically precise control. Nano manufacturing, also known as molecular nanotechnology, is the process of assembling complex structures with atomic precision. The idea is to precisely place every atom within a product so that components are exactly the same size, type, and number of atoms. Here at the molecular scale, nanomachines make small building blocks from molecular raw materials. The first machines sort molecules by their size and shape, passing some, rejecting others. Only molecules of the right kind can enter the processing machinery. These molecules contain four atoms, two of carbon and two of hydrogen. The molecules bind to a device that carries them to the next stage. Then, a rotating mechanism swings tool tips into contact with the bound molecules. Each tip presses a molecular tool against a molecule, bonding it firmly. The tools shown here have been analyzed using advanced quantum chemistry techniques. Another tool moves in from the left to remove the hydrogen atoms, leaving a pair of carbon atoms exposed and ready to use. The tools then carry these atoms to their destination, where each pair bonds to a nanoscale building block, making a tiny bit of crystalline carbon, a bit of diamond. Motions happen quickly at this scale. This scene shows motion slowed by a factor of more than a million. A conveyor carries the blocks past further machines, which build the blocks step by step to full size. Elsewhere, other specialized machines build blocks of different kinds. A system of conveyor belts and transfer mechanisms carries completed blocks from where they are made to where they are needed. This transfer mechanism moves blocks from one belt to another. The transportation system carries many different kinds of blocks, different shapes, different materials, different functions. It delivers them to the next stage of manufacturing. Here, a programmable machine lifts and places small blocks to make larger blocks. The small blocks bond on contact to form components containing millions of precisely arranged atoms. These can be simple structural bricks or intricate components for mechanical and electronic systems. The completed components are delivered to the final assembly stage, where many machines work together to build the final product. Motions at this larger scale are still quick. This scene shows motion slowed by a factor of 10,000. At the base of each machine, a transfer mechanism grabs components and lifts them from a conveyor. Each is flipped around, then carried up to the underside of the product under construction. Finally, machines lift the components and plug them in place, adding layer after layer to the bottom of the product. When the last layer is finished and construction is complete, the product is ready to be removed and used. The result of this production run is an atomically precise multiprocessor laptop computer with a billion times more processing power than today's best. The only waste products are warm air and pure water.
in a significant move forward in the march toward creating electronic circuits that are thousands of times smaller than today's most advanced technology, IBM is announcing a milestone in the ability to manipulate and understand matter at the atomic level. Scientists at IBM's Almaden Research Center in San Jose, California, have for the first time demonstrated the ability to measure exactly how much force is needed to move individual atoms. Knowing the different forces required to move different atoms will allow IBM's nano constructionists to figure out which materials should be used for building devices from the atom up. To simplify, let's just say that each particle is positively charged so that they repel each other. Here's the lowdown. On the left is the magnetizable particle, on the right, an AIDS virus antibody. They bind together because of their positive and negative charges. If the virus is present, the antibody recognizes it and sticks to it. Then the magnetizable nanoparticle is extracted, still bound to the virus. <laughs> 